Well, I am sorry. The uh, last video, I accidentally stopped it right in the middle of the recording. So I will have to create this as a multi-part video series. So I'll include a link back to the previous video in there and a link to this video from that previous video. Um, anyways, where I was, and I apologize about that, where I was was uh, I was going to go ahead and start that tutorial. Um, and just kind of show you, I'm going to go ahead and um, they provide you with two cloud formation scripts too. I'm going to go ahead and run the first one, which will set up your VPC and your subnets and your, um, it'll create a security group for your master control plane as well. So preferably in production, you'll want to actually run these cloud formation templates from the command line using the AWS CLI, so you can use uh, the stack create <laughs> command, but for the purpose of this demo, to avoid any um, uh, any distractions and things like that, I'll just run it from the UI, um, just because the end result is we want to see these uh, the stuff being created in the cluster as well. So I'm going to run the setup, and I'll go through next, and I'm going to call this, I've created this before a few times, but I am going to actually call this EKS demo setup. And in production, again, you'll want to use tags, but for the demo, we don't really care. And I will go ahead and and go ahead, let's see, do a create. And this will make a little bit more sense on what this is actually going to do. So when this is finished, this is actually creating a VPC that we can run our new EKS cluster in again with the, uh, with the subnets inside of there. And those subnets are gonna be for the purpose of, uh, you know, like all the availability zones and things of that nature, because our worker nodes are gonna be running across that, across those. Um, so I am going to pause this video until this stack finishes and I'll show you the end result of that. Okay, so that one, that first one finished. And like I said, if you look through all of the events on there, it, it on this particular stack, it creates a VPC and your subnets and your route table um, inside of there. So take a look at our VPC, what we've got going on here. And we should have two VPCs. So we got my default one. This is my own personal account. Um, so we got the default one right here, and that's our default one right here, and then here's the one that got created. Uh, basically, as you can see with the route table, things of that nature. Um, let's see here. So that, again, that's a cloud formation template for the most part. As you can see, it's, it's preferable that you run it from the command line in production, but that's okay. We're just, for demo purposes, doing it here. <clears throat> the next step is we're gonna actually go ahead and create a cluster through the EKS uh, manager. So let's go, and if you could do a search for EKS or it shows up here, because I've been doing some stuff with it and clearing it out. Um, go down here, don't use the ECS one. Um, let's just go ahead and use clusters, and I am going to create a cluster. And I am going to call it um, EKS demo cluster. And we could use the latest Kubernetes or we can use 110. I've been using 110 for now, but <clears throat> I'm gonna try some things on the later one. Uh, for the role name, we'll use the demo role. Um, so the tutorial shows you that you need to create a role, basically that allows um, you access. Um, you can actually go in there, it allows you access to the, to, for your nodes and stuff to, and clusters to uh, access EKS services there. For our VPC, let's go ahead and select this one. This got created by that previous cloud formation template. As you can see, it's EKS demo setup, and it basically brings in the uh, subnets for you. So we're gonna go ahead and select all three of those. The security group, it created to the previous template. Um, so let's just go ahead and do the uh, this one for the master control plane, and we will Go ahead and create. Now I'm going to pause the video here because I will say this will take upwards of 10 minutes or so to create. And when it's done creating, you're going to get an API server endpoint and you're going to get a certificate. 
by which you'll need to go ahead and update um, one of your config files so that you can communicate to your cluster. Um, before I pause the video, there's two ways that you can communicate to your cluster. Um, you can use AWS uh, CLI or you can use this um, third party tool called EKS CTL by Weaveworks, I believe. Um, so that'll allow you to create clusters and stuff like that from the command line. Um, but when this is finished, um, what we'll have to do is we'll have to instruct uh, our kube CTL proxy, basically, or kube CTL will have to give it a, a path and an endpoint and a certificate and such that we can communicate directly to this given cluster. Um, so I am going to go ahead and pause this video and wait for this to complete. Okay, it's been about 10 or 12 minutes or so and the cluster finally got created. Like I said, this will take some time. And again, um, as a reminder, when you're going through this demo or trying things out with EKS, please do be aware that you will be paying 20 cents an hour. Um, it doesn't seem like much, but it, it can add up if you uh, leave it running or you create your cluster and you forget that it's running and you leave it running overnight and things of that nature. So do be prepared, there is no free tier for this. Um, so what we've got now that the cluster has been created is we've got an endpoint for our cluster as well as um, a certificate for the cluster. And what we're going to need to do at that point is we're going to have to go ahead and, and um, for cube CTL, we're going to have to go ahead and, and update our cube config EKS file. And what we're going to have to do, let me just make this a little bit bigger here, um, wider so I can. All right. So as you can see, I've been trying this a couple times, uh, deploying different applications and stuff like that on here. Um, let me close down this window right here. What we want to do is we want to update every time you create a new cluster. Um, Technically in production, you just only do this once or whatever, but every time we update a new cluster, create one, we want to update our server and our certificate authority data um, so that when we use kubectl, which is a command line to communicate to Kubernetes, um, it'll know exactly where it's going. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to take this server endpoint and copy it to the clipboard. And let's go down here. And paste that in. Let me just make sure that it got the right one here. Um, now, sometimes I've been having some problems with uh, the Git Bash here to try to copy it. So let me try this again. I am going to copy. As you can see, I don't know if that's an issue with the, uh, the Bash shell because I'm running this on Windows. Let's go ahead and try it again. Interesting, it still looks like it didn't do it. So one second here. What I'm gonna do is uh, open up a line here. Gotta pay attention. I actually got burned in one of my tests. I thought I was uh, pasting the right value and it turns out it kept pasting the old one over and over and over again. So let's just make sure. Okay, this time it did it. It I've noticed periodically it does it if you open up a new line, but I think this is an issue with uh, Git Bash on Windows and nothing else basically other than that. So now for the certificate of authority, let's do the same thing. We'll go ahead and click this to copy it to the clipboard right there. And basically um, let's make sure that it does the same thing there. Paste this in, make sure that this looks okay. Because I don't trust it, S0T0LQ0. And then the top one. Okay, I'm gonna, I think that looks pretty good. So anyways, um, we have to update this file so that when we use kubectl, we can go ahead and, and communicate to our clusters. So um, let's go ahead and just close that down. Next thing we want to do is create our worker nodes. So for that, we go back to cloud formation 
and create a stack. And I am going to select another template, which is our EKS worker nodes setup. And um, basically that's just another cloud formation template that's gonna go ahead and, and create um, security groups. It's gonna create our uh, worker nodes. I'm only gonna specify two um, amongst other things. And so we'll end up with um, EC2 instance and uh, other things here for 